let us in on it. Maybe some of the inner circle might have know, known it was more serious, but I didn't. And then one day, we were looking at a rough cut of this film, and Walt was there in the hall. And as he passed us, on, in the hall we were standing there, he, he looked at us and he said, keep up the good work, fellas. It's the first time and the only time he ever complimented our work. And he winked at us and walked down the hall. Walt did not return to the studio as usual the next day. He checked himself back into the hospital instead. Roy would get up very early in the morning and go to see Walt. And Walt always complained about his feet being cold. So Roy would stand there and rub his feet and get them warm. On the night of December 14, 1966, Walt sent Lillian home from his bedside to get some rest. He promised her he was feeling stronger. Roy stayed behind and sat at the bedside while his kid brother, flat on his back, pointed up to the ceiling tiles, trying to explain the vision of Disney World and Epcot that shimmered before him, trying to make Roy see it as he did. Now there is where the highway will run, he explained. And there is the route for the monorail. I went down to get my hair cut. And it was a gown barber shop. And she was cutting my hair and she says, too bad about Walt. And I said, oh, he's going to be okay. He'll be back next week. No, he died. Well, I couldn't get out of that chair quicker to get home. And my mother and my cousin are just like this. They wouldn't even talk to me. Well, it was a bad day. I was next door at the studio. And... Uh... I rushed over and he was gone. I heard somebody shrieking and running down the hall. It was one of the secretaries. And I opened the door and everybody was rushing into the hallway and said, Walt died. Nobody could believe it. And we all gathered in Bill Anderson's office, a whole bunch of us. And they were crying, our men were crying, I was crying. It was terrible, it was horrible, it was just horrible. I was in out by my office in the model shop and John Hench came out and told me Walt passed. And everybody was just, you know, it's just like it taking the breath out of us. It was like the end of the world, like the end of the world. Walt Disney is dead tonight at the age of 65. Had undergone surgery last month for removal of part of his left arm. Four Emmy, the Irving Thalberg Award. Walt Disney, Hollywood's Prince of Fantasy. Walt Disney's death was front page news the next day, across the country and around the world. Of his success, Disney has said there's no magic formula. Children all over the world have one thing in common, love of laughter. In the year after he died, nearly seven million people visited Disneyland. Tens of millions around the world listened to a Disney record, or bought Disney licensed merchandise, or tuned in to Walt's television show. Hundreds of millions saw one of Disney's movies. That sense of happiness, that sense of American identity, those are things that you want to achieve, and Disney offers that to you. He's either the man who ruined American culture and brought all of this fakeness into our lives, or he's the man who inspired us and gave us hours and hours of entertainment. 
Walt Disney represented more than just a guy. He was an ethos. He was in a way of approaching life. And whether you hated him or loved him, there was no one that could argue with his effect on 20th century culture. I can move. I can talk. <laughs> How do we deal with growing I up? Can What does it mean when we leave childhood behind? How do we deal with death? There are questions all humans deal with, no matter what period, no matter what culture. Disney goes back and taps old myths and old narrative arcs that are deeply rooted in all of us. What is the meaning of my life? What is my journey really born of? How can I discover who I am? He affects all of us. No one is untouched by Walt Disney. There aren't that many figures in American culture who cover as many bases, who do as many things as Walt Disney. Disney was somebody who understood the American psyche. He was also someone who anticipated the future of the American psyche. He understood a whole lot about us.